Hey guys, uh, I wanted to do a three-part video on the next lab, which has to do with mo uh, matching rock layers, uh, basically the relative dating concepts that we went over in the class notes. So you'll have a PDF copy of the lab, uh, a document where you can type in your answers to questions, the vocabulary, uh, and for this one there are some drawings that we're going to have to do too. Uh, I want to do each procedure as its own video. So uh, the first part we'll start with is procedure A. And I want to spend a little bit of time going over procedure A because I think it is a little confusing. Uh, but it says the first set of four diagrams represent four outcrops at different locations. Reconstruct the complete sequence of events. Assume that the oldest rocks are on the bottom and the youngest are on top. Draw on the layers on the appropriate column of the report sheet. So if we flip this over and we take a look at the diagram, here we have our four rock layers, A, B, C, and D, with a legend just showing what the rock types are. Uh, the fossils that you see here go with part B, and let's do that in the, in the next video. And basically the concept here is that we have these four uh, different rock outcroppings near each other. Uh, so these uh, four places, location A, B, C, and D, represent the rocks that can be seen in these four different locations, not too far apart, or possibly a hole drilled in four different locations. And these are the rocks that were found at, at those locations. And if we look at the instructions, while well, they're telling us we can assume the bottom is old and the top is young. The concept is to basically match up the rock layers uh, but it's not so simple because one of the things that you'll notice if you really start looking at this is that some rock layers are missing. You know, so if we look, for example, uh, here, we have our uh, basalt, our contact metamorphism, our limestone, but that's missing in column B. And this happens. Uh, we talked about in the other videos this idea of an unconformity, the missing rock. And in location B, we see no evidence of the limestone and the contact metamorphism, which means there must have been some uh, period of weathering and erosion for column B, and that rock layer is just gone, uh, and, and the unconformity would be located here. So it becomes a little bit more difficult to match all this up uh, because we have rocks that are missing, and, and that's actually one of the challenges that geologists face. So the idea basically is to try to identify the oldest rock layers and put them in order like we did in some of the other videos, put them in sequence, and to recreate that sequence here where it says procedure A. And we're basically gonna draw in the rock symbols going up from oldest to youngest on this. You can either print this paper out, or if you don't have a printer, you could just draw it on some loose leaf and then turn it in when we have school again. So anyway, uh, let's, let's just get into it now. It can be a little tricky to line these up. Let's start from the bottom and we'll work our way up. And if we look at the bottom, if we look at B, C, and D, we have these three layers of conglomerate, but then over here we have some gneiss. So I'm going to assume that the gneiss is the oldest of the rock layers. And over here, I'm gonna draw in some squiggly lines to represent the banding and the rock symbol for uh, nice. Maybe I'll go over that again, make that a little darker. Okay, so there's my nice. Now um, that means that the next rock in the sequence would probably be the conglomerate. So now I'm going to draw various sized sediments to show the conglomerate, some large particles, some finer material. Okay, there's the conglomerate. You can see I'm using pencil uh, just in case I make a mistake. Now, uh, now things get a little trickier. Now we have some missing rock. So if we take a look at the diagram, well, we have these matching, we have the conglomerate matching here and here, like this, nice down below. 
Now over here we have a sandstone layer underneath a shale. And here we have shale and conglomerate, which means the sandstone is missing here. And to show that, what I'm going to do is just draw in this kind of like little triangle to show that somewhere between position A and position B, the sandstone disappeared. Again, this is what we call an unconformity, and I can kind of draw that in with a squiggly line. There's missing rock there. That's what the unconformity means. That's what it represents. Now, also under the shale, over here, I have some sandstone, and it disappears in column C. So that means that we have to have another unconformity over here. The sandstone is missing. But in either case, uh, the sandstone would be the next rock layer. So now I'm going to draw some dots to do sandstone. I think that this part of the lab would be kind of hard for you to figure out by yourselves. Uh, so again, if you follow along with the videos, you shouldn't have any trouble. Okay, so now we've got nice conglomerate sandstone. Now over here, we have sandstone followed by shale. And over here, we have um, sandstone followed by shale also. So that would indicate the next layer is, is probably a shell. So now we're going to move up to the next layer, and I'm going to be drawing uh, small dashed lines to show shale. So there we've got the shale. Right. So now we've got nice conglomerate sandstone and shale moving up. You know, it lights a little bright on the pencil. There it is. And now we need to figure out the next uh, rock layer. So now I have shale and shale. Those match going across this way. And then the shale disappears over here. Again, unconformity. We have shale here. And then above the shale, we have this rock here, which if we look at the legend is a siltstone. We also have some siltstone over this piece of shale here. The siltstone seems to be missing here, so again we have another unconformity. We have missing rock due to weathering and erosion. Uh, and we see the same thing here. The siltstone is, is missing. So anyway, now we'll go ahead and we'll draw the symbol for uh, siltstone, which is going to be similar to the shale, but uh, we're going to have little dots in between. So now we've got our nice, our conglomerate, our sandstone, our shale, and our layer of uh, siltstone. And now we have three left. So if we go back to the block diagrams, we were here at the siltstone. We know the siltstone is missing here. Siltstone is missing here. Siltstone is here. Well, we have three... Uh, sequences or three layers exposed of the next rock, which is rock salt, which seems to be missing from up here, which means again we have another unconformity. We're missing rock from column D. The rock salt isn't there. But it would have to be the next layer. We have it in A, B, and C, but not D, so it, it probably just got eroded or, or weathered away. So now our next rock layer is going to be uh, the rock salt, and that's going to be crisscross lines like this. So there's the rock salt. Okay. So now we've got rock salt, and now we have two rocks left. And if we look at the tops of A, B, C, and D, we have limestone here. Uh, we have limestone here and limestone here. This has been eroded. You can see it's kind of got that wavy top. So the contact metamorphism and the igneous rock, the basalt, is probably just gone. And here we have another unconformity. We have the uh, limestone unit missing. So now we're missing the limestone with the contact uh, metamorphism. Missing from B, but we do have it in A, C, and D. So now I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to draw in my limestone. I'll 
I'll do something like this, kind of looks like bricks. And we have some of that, uh, again, contact metamorphism up here from the heat, from the igneous rock. And I'll just draw some hatch marks in like that. And then uh, at the top here would have to be our igneous rock, uh, our youngest rock, which is the basalt. And the basalt symbol would be these uh, crosses. So now I'm just going to draw uh, a bunch of crosses like that. And that's it. And I think it would make sense to label these. Uh, so if we go back to the bottom, we have our nice. We have our conglomerate. We have our sandstone. Shale, siltstone, uh, rock salt, limestone, we have the contact metamorphism happening there, I'll just write contact meta. Now. When we went over contact metamorphism back in the fall, we talked about, well, in this situation, we have igneous rock and limestone in between. This zone of contact metamorphism where the limestone has been metamorphosed by heat. Well, what rock would that become? I'll give you a second to think about it. The limestone, the metamorphic version of a, a limestone would be a marble. Oops, let me write that up higher. That's why I use pencil. Marble. Marble. Okay, so this would be the marble, and then up here would be the basalt. Okay, I think that that would have been difficult for you to do by yourself, uh, but again, follow the videos. I'm trying to explain the labs really thoroughly so that you could do these things at home without too much trouble. Okay, so I'm going to do two more videos on this lab, uh, one for Procedure 2 or Procedure B, and uh, another video for uh, Procedure C. Okay, so look out for those. Okay, thanks.